Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use S3 lifecycle rules to automatically transition data in between different tiers on your S3 bucket. Uh, this can greatly reduce costs, especially if you have a lot of data that you don't access very often in your bucket. Uh, so this video is an extension of a previous one that I made a few weeks ago, uh, just overviewing how lifecycle rules work. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out and learning about how exactly the mechanisms that I'm going to talk about here all fit together, uh, go ahead and check out that video. I'll put that in the description section below. Uh, but for this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do it. So here we are in the S3 console. Uh, so I pre-created a bucket that has a bunch of files in it just for demo purposes in this video. Uh, so we just got some, uh, some random stuff in here uh, just to show how this works. So in order to create the lifecycle rule, uh, we do so on a bucket. And in order to do that, we enter inside the bucket. Then we go to the management tab up here click on management, and by default, you're in the lifecycle rule section. Uh, so all you have to do at this point is click on add lifecycle rule. That fires up a prompt here, and in this prompt, this is where we're gonna specify all of the settings for our lifecycle rule. So the rule I wanna to create today is gonna to be for a full S3 lifecycle. Um, so after 30 days, I wanna move this file to the intelligent tier. After 90 days, I wanna move it to Glacier. And after one year, I wanna move it to Deep Glacier. And after 10 years, I want to delete the file. Um, so this is gonna be the full life cycle of a S3 um, file or a series of files that are within a bucket. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, so we need to create a rule name. So let's call this S3 full life cycle. And down here, it's gonna ask us to choose a rule scope. Um, so if you want to apply this rule to a subset of files within a bucket, maybe only those that are within a certain path or a certain folder, you can do that by clicking on the first button here, limit the scope to a specific prefix, and just add the path that you want. So say if I had one that was a transactions folder or something like that, I would just say slash slash transactions and this would tell um, s3 lifecycle to only commit the rule to the files that are within this this path uh, so we're not going to do that here for just for simplicity's sake i'm just going to apply it to all so i'm going to click on this second um, box here uh, we're going to go ahead and click on next now so this is where we actually set up the transitions. Um, so if you didn't already know, there's a concept of versioning in S3. Uh, so every time you modify a file, a version of it gets stored and kind of um, maintained. Uh, although the current version is always the one that is uh, retrieved if you're kind of looking it up by key. Um, so if you want to have different rules based on the versions of the file, you can set that up. It's pretty easy to do and there's not much difference than what I'm going to show you now. Uh, but we're just going to do for a current version here just to show you as a basic example. So I clicked on the tab current version and now we have this uh, second prompt here for current versions of objects uh, just telling us that we don't have any transitions set up yet. So let's go ahead now and click on add transition and start creating these. Okay, so object creation obviously takes place when it's created uh, and we want to transition it to the intelligent tiering, which as I mentioned in my previous video is quite a bit cheaper than standard. Uh, we wanna do that after 30 days. Uh, so after 30 days, transition to intelligent and then click on add transition to add a second rule now. Um, so we're gonna go to Glacier after 90 days. And we also get this nice big warning box here. This is just telling us that there's an additional cost for using Glacier. Um, it's just effectively saying that you're gonna transition a whole bunch of data into the Glacier service, and there's an additional cost for that. Uh, so you can see here, it gives you a preview as well. Since I only have you know three objects in my bucket here, my estimate is very low. But if you have a big bucket, then this may be a little bit different. Um, so I'm gonna acknowledge this. This is something that you must do in order to transition to Glacier. And the last rule that I set up is we wanna to go to Deep Glacier after one year. So we're gonna put in 365 days. Um, so that looks good here, transition to Deep Glacier. Um, yep, 30, 90, one year, that looks good. Click on next now. Okay, now we wanna configure expiration or deletion. Uh, so this is effectively a TTL or a time to live feature of an S3 object. Um, so in order to make this work, we just click on current version again. And um, after some period of days is when this thing is gonna be deleted. So I wanna do this after 10 years. I wanna delete this after um, 3,650 days, which is 365 times 10. So after 10 years, finally, this object's gonna be um, just blown away after being in this S3 bucket for a while. Um, so that's pretty much everything that you need to know, at least for setting this up initially. Go ahead and click on next now. 
And this is just giving us a summary of everything that it's gonna, gonna do. So we can see uh, intelligent after 30, glacier after 90, deep glacier after 365, and expire after 10 years. Uh, so that looks good. Go ahead and click on the acknowledgement here. Um, and we're just going to kind of acknowledge that this applies to all the files in the bucket because I didn't specify a path as I described earlier. So now we can go ahead and click on save. And after we do that, we can see here now in the lifecycle section of the management tab that we can see that we have this S3 lifecycle rule that's being applied to the whole bucket. Uh, we can do a couple of manipulations here. We can enable or disable it after you click on it, of course, enable or disable. Uh, you can also go ahead and edit the settings. So if you want to change this to a specific path or um, kind of modify any of the transition rules, you can go ahead and do that. So hopefully you like this video. Check out this one on the right here for more about S3 life cycles and on the left for an S3 beginner guide. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.